All right. Uh, so thanks for joining us, everyone, today. It is July 5th, uh, 2022. Happy birthday to my brother. <laughs> um, and uh, this is a special meeting of the Lake County, or not a special meeting, a regular meeting of the Lake County Board of County Commissioners. Um, we've changed our meeting times now going forward to 11 a.m. So um, on Tuesdays. Just so much better, except for on this holiday. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. All right. So, um, if everyone will make sure that their phones are on silent, and we will start by um, saying the pledge in a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, nation, liberty, and justice. Thank you all very much. Um, so with that, I'll move into an approval of the agenda. If anyone has anything that they would like to change or remove or modify. Is a, I don't have anything other than if we need to rearrange agenda items for any reason, but. I don't have anything to change either. Yeah, okay. All right. I'll move to approve our agenda for today. Uh, second. All right. Any further discussion? No, thank you. None for me. All right. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, community informational items. We will start with Commissioner Mudge today. Sure. Um, I the Demonstration, wildfire demonstration project down on County Road 4 is nearing completion. Uh, didn't quite get it finished on that six acre parcel that the county owns along the right of way there in Tur Turquoise Lake Estates, but uh, lots of great work. It looks really good and lots of positive feedback from the neighbors. So that's very exciting. Um, we are going to wrap and finalize, finish that project with some of those co-swap dollars and perhaps the crew that's coming in to start at Community Field and on CMC campus. Um, and so that will be done um, and we'll just continue to work with partners in Excel, um, especially as you know they have their power lines down the other side and, and probably have an interest in partnering as we, as we might tackle um, some of that work on the ground in the future. Um, and we also were awarded the second landscape um, co-swap uh, Colorado, Strategic Wildfire Action Program uh, funding to the value of $500,000. So thank you to Colorado State Forest Service and ARWIC for continuing to help us um, navigate and apply and manage all those opportunities. Cool. All right, Commissioner nice. Fiedler. Oh, sorry, were you done? Yeah. Okay, Commissioner Fiedler. <laughs> Um, just a note on the city council agenda, city's participation in and contribution to the Justice Center is on the agenda tonight. Cool. Wonderful. Um, I think just for myself, um, just to follow up that we did apply for MMOF funding for um, our transit project and implementation. Um, so that application was submitted. Um, to our local TPR, um, Transportation Re Regional um, Planning. And so um, we'll hear back from that. We're getting ready to today um, begin the pre-application for the 5311 Federal Transit Authority operating dollars to supplement um, any MMOF funding that we may be awarded for transit. Um, so that's been um, submitted and we will hear about that shortly. Um, I think just want to want to also um, say good luck to Get Outdoors Leadville. Today's their first day of Rocky's Rock. So um, camp looked like it was busy this morning. So um, good luck to them on their on their season this summer. And thank you for providing that care in our community. Um, so with that, um, we'll move into any commissioner clarifications that we may have, Commissioner Fiedler or Commissioner Munch. Nothing for me. Thanks. All right, none for me either. Thank you. 
Um, public comments on items not on the agenda. Um, in the room with us, we have County Manager Tim Bergman, um, Human Resources Specialist Allie Garvey, Claire Skeen, um, Assistant to the County Manager, Attorney Chris Floyd, and Cindy from the Clerk's Office. Um, there isn't any public with us in the room, but if anybody in the room wishes to make a public comment, you have an opportunity now. No? All right, um, we have one participant on the Zoom, and I'm sorry I cannot see the remainder of your phone number, but if you would like to make a public comment, um, this is an opportunity for you to do so. You are welcome to unmute yourself um, and make a public comment if you'd like for three minutes. All right, so we move on into new business. Um, all right, first on our agenda, Lake County Public Library Board of Trustees appointment of Matt O'Brien, um, submitted by the Lake County Library Board of Trustees. Um, Tim, do you want to present any information on this to us or um, give us any background or any other additional information? Sure. <clears throat> Um, update. Sure. Uh, so Lake County Public Library does have a board of trustees, um, and it is under their charge to find new board members when a board member rolls off or resigns. So long-term uh, board member Kathy O'Leary um, resigned to finally enjoy her retirement officially. Um, so we thanked her. Um, profusely for her service to the library. Um, the library and the board of trustees did a public search um, and Matt O'Brien sent in a letter of interest and was interviewed by the board of trustees and um, the board really liked him and uh, took a vote on June 14th at their regular meeting um, to recommend his appointment to the board. And now it's up to the board of county commissioners to approve that. Um, and Matt's uh, term will end December 31st, 2026. There are five-year terms on that board. Okay. I don't have any other questions um, on this or the letter of recommendation. So Commissioner Roger Friedler, do either of you have questions for Tim? Nope. Is Matt a local? Do we have that? I don't know if we have that. Like the airport doesn't require a, oh, know, a resident. Yes, yes. And I'm just curious if there. Uh, he does live here. I cannot remember what he does here, but he is. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just curious. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. No, I don't have anything else. Thank you. Okay. Actually, one thing, just I, I, my recollection is I mean, the library board, that's statutorily required, right? Yes. That's not something we created. Yeah. yeah right. So. Okay. I will accept a motion. Sure. Uh, I'll move to approve the appointment of Matt O'Brien to the Lake County Public Library Board of Trustees. I'll second. All right. Any further discussion? None for me. No, thank you. All right. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for bringing that to us as well. Um, next item on our new business agenda is adopting a mid-year cost of living adjustment for Lake County government employees presented by Tim Bergman, the county manager. So Tim, you want to come back yeah. up to the table um, to give us a presentation? Yeah. Um, that would be great. I don't know if you want me to give you yeah. just us. Well, oh, sorry. Uh, you're good. <clears throat> Okay. Right. Thank you. Um, 
For the record, my name is Tim Bergman. I serve as county manager, um, and I'm here today for a um, budget action request for a mid-year um, COLA action for our staff. Um, all right, I can do this backwards. Um, I know it's over here. Um, so these are just uh, some of the problems, but overarching problems that we're facing as an employer. Um, you know, as we are emerge from the worst of the pandemic, there are externalities that have hit. Um, you know, that have hit the labor market. <clears throat> you know, there we're, there have been an increase in excess retirements. Um, a large portion of women have dropped out of the labor force and have unfortunately stayed out of the labor force. Um, in July through November 2021, that included me, 21 million people quit their jobs um, and moved on to other opportunities. Um, currently, the Colorado state average, according to CDLE, um, we have a 3.5% unemployment rate, which is low, which is a good thing for the economy, but it is a hard thing for an employer uh, to attract and retain employees. Uh, Lake County has a um, stubbornly high poverty rate uh, it's at 10.6% now, and um, year to date, uh, Lake County government has had about a 12% turnover rate. Um, as everyone knows, there has been steady inflation in um, all industrialized economies. Um, the U.S. is sitting at about a little over 8% year to date. Um, the war in Ukraine um, has had an impact on food costs. Um, which is adding to the overall inflation picture. Um, the cost of housing in Lake County um, is high. Um, and with the recent rate increases at the Fed, um, you know, mortgage rate increases are increasing, which has cooled the housing market a little bit, which is a good thing, but it's still hampering people like taking out new mortgages. And then with any <clears throat> you know, increase in interest rates, generally rents will follow that path as well. And then um, we are facing stiff um, local competition. So we're not just competing against Climax anymore. Um, we have a lot of local competition within the county um, that we are, you know, that we are competing against for uh, employees. Um, and mainly to, uh, my goal is to retain our employees. So if we look at the city of Leadville um, job postings, we are competitive with them for director and manager salaries and doing slightly better for entry level and uh, other, other positions. Uh, local nonprofits um, have starting wages at 41,000, 45,000 and 50,000 a year. Um, so we're kind of competitive with them. Um, looking at Chafee County for entry level and custodial positions, we are competitive there, but for manager and director level salaries, they are far above us. Um, and if you look in our local paper at the classified section, every job starts between 19 and 25 an hour with uh, signing bonuses between 500 and $5,000. Um, those $5,000 sign on bonuses are mainly for CDLs, which uh, the county is in uh, desperate need of or in, would sorely hurt if any of our equipment operators left um, for other opportunities. Um, and feel free if you have questions on any of these slides or comments, feel free to interject. Um, so that is the, um, the problem that we are facing mainly as an employer um, with um, attracting but mainly retaining our employees. Um, so if you look at this graph, it is a slightly dated, but it, the, the lines are still true. So blue is our average job openings and red is the number of unemployed. And if you pay attention to the very end there, you will see where they cross, meaning that there are more job openings than there are unemployed people. So I'm facing a very stiff um, market to try and attract people. And this number, you can't see, this is Lake County specific. Um, you can't see the top because of the zoom. Can you want to that? Mm -hmm. that? Where I don't know where we'll right there is good. <laughs> um, and then you know, last week, um, Sue Miller, who's our Colorado Workforce Center um, 
director in Leadville. This is a direct quote from her. Unemployment is flat in Lake County and retention should be every employer's goal. So this is Eagle Lake and Summit counties. A uh, similar graph, red is unemployed, blue is average job openings, and you can see the drastic change there uh, in the market. And then here, this is um, total separations in Colorado, 20 through 21. But uh, what I wanted to show this for was for you to pay attention to the red line. Um, the red line is quits. Um, and you can see that the red bar is bigger than blue, which is layoff and other discharges. Um, and so really what it's telling us is that more people are quitting their jobs because the labor market is so good. So they have opportunities to find jobs elsewhere. Our next graph Uh, shows where we are um, in variances from the state average, state average salary, and the column on the right, the cost of living factor. So 100 is the average cost of living in the US. So if you're over 100, you have a higher cost of living. If you're below 100, you have a lower cost of living. So not surprisingly, all of these counties have um, higher uh, cost of living than um, the regular, you know, than the rest of the US. And then you can also in the first column shows your average annual, annual wage. You can see where Lake County is. We are somewhat competitive with our neighbors, but we are still not Jacks. We're still, um, you know, behind on some of these. And not that we need to catch up completely to the Colorado state median wage, but um, being closer to our competitors um, will definitely help us and be able to have people want to stay in the county to work in the county, whether if they go over to Eagle Summit or Chafee. So these were, these are, all those graphs were just illustrating the problem better for you guys. And then here is my um, budget action or my request for a mid-year COLA. And so a COLA is a cost of living adjustment, which um, acknowledges the inflationary factors in the economy. So as we've seen that if we're at an 8% inflationary rate, this mid-year COLA will attempt to help our staff address that, whether it's with their groceries, their rent, their mortgage, car payments, anything that are seeing increased um, rates. Um, so my proposal is for our 98 staff who are making between 40 and $59,000 is to have a 5% increase. And for select staff above $59,000, which would be 17 FTE is to have a 4% uh, COLA increase. So that would be a general fund investment of a little over $108,000 and then a total funds investment of $223,215. Um, and as I start, started with, my main goal here is staff retention. Um, to retain the people we do have. And part of that is other building on other goals that I have and want, and that the board has set a vision for um, is to make Lake County, Lake County government an employer, an employer of choice in our community, um, which we have started to do with partnerships with CMC and with the high school with internships um, and trying to be a direct path for people to be able to come into a professional career at Lake County government. Um, and then also an ancillary goal is to maintain our current service levels, but also by acknowledging um, the inflationary factors that we're going through um, to improve our, our service levels, and showing staff that we do care about them, um, but that there is partly an expectation that uh, current service levels are maintained and then areas can improve. Flat school. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. So there are several puzzle pieces that Lake County government has in place um, and things that we are working on implementing. So the board uh, did create a learning and development fund fund, which has been great um, and has helped, um, you know, is helping staff, whether it is with um, obtaining certain licensures um, or other 
other things that benefit their career, their career path. Um, we now have job descriptions for all, all positions within Lake County government, which is a big win because we can tie those job descriptions to a performance review process. We currently do not have a performance review process at all for staff, and whether that is a tool for a manager to use with their employee to work on their performance or achieving goals or meeting metrics that the board um, has outlaid, we don't um, really have a tool for that um, for managers and supervisors to use. Um, the performance reviews tie into a um, merit beat, <clears throat> would tie into a merit-based increases. Um, so we, we currently do not have a policy for merit-based increases. They are currently one-offs right now. So I'm working um, on developing a merit-based increase policy for the board to approve. Um, so that will be something that we can always point to um, for employees when during the performance review process, if they are eligible for a merit-based increase, to be based off of the budget. And then same with a uh, COLA policy. The board currently does not have a COLA policy on, on when you will decide to do one, uh, how much it will be, what the factors are that should be considered in that. So um, all of those policies are things that I'm working on that can be used for board, for, for board adoption um, which will also help so that um, you know, future boards can look to these things, but then they will have to think really hard about it uh, if they wanna make changes to those policies. Um, and another you know, thing talking about this, we have currently right now, we have a very rough draft of salary bands, but we wanna work on creating and formalizing those with job descriptions so that an employee knows what salary range they are in, and then they can tie it to a merit-based increase and in how they can how they can grow in their career here. Um, we have a great employee handbook, which we'll fine tune a bit today. Um, <clears throat> and then also bigger picture, um, the 2023 budget um, will be the best budget that the board has ever adopted because we have um, taken apart literally every piece and gone through line by line um, with the consultant and with the finance director on creating um, a much more responsive budget for the board to react to um, and respond to, but also a budget that will allow you to um, work on work more on various projects, but also like having areas uh, for discretionary funding, like <laughs> merit-based increases. Um, the board also has a vision of wanting to create a more professional organization. So this is one step in that way um, of showing our staff that we want to retain them and that we do appreciate the work that they do. Um, so I think this um, fits in nicely. And then also <clears throat> it would seem, I would think with all of these various puzzle pieces, um, you know, it's, it's apparent that compensation has been on the back burner for many boards predating all of you. Um, so hopefully with these changes that we make, um, and these tough conversations that we're having and creating like policies for, for this board and future boards to use um, that we can, um, you know, that, that future boards will be better positioned to make, to make these decisions. It's unfortunate or fortunate that you guys have landed with this to create all of these policies mm -hmm. on what um, you want uh, Lake County government uh, to look like in our, our compensation package to look like. Um, so we have those puzzle pieces and then a few, um, another puzzle piece is our um, future projections. So the deputy assessor put this together for us and this is only, um, what's on the screen now is only showing um, uh, property taxes. And there are of course several variables that could change this, whether it is state legislation, board's decision on how many mills to levy, those kind of things. But um, you can see that we have um, healthy projections going forward for the next three years. And if you look, you know, at the difference between, uh, you know, 2022 projections, estimated revenues, and 2023s, like this, this cola increase um, can easily be absorbed in that and is less than a percent of that total increase. Um, and then looking at these factors um, as well, um, there is enough room within these new revenues to, to do a COP payment for Justice Center. If it is at $2 million or around $2 million, um, 
And then if we also wanna look at sales taxes. So for the past three years in sales taxes, we've brought in um, a little over $7.2 million. Um, so which has averaged over the past three years from like two million to two and a half million dollars. Year to date in sales taxes, we brought in over a little over $1.3 million. Um, and I project that to be, to at least our estimate was it for it to come in at 2.5 million. I project that it'll come in a little bit higher. Um, I know that summer season has gotten off to a little bit of a slow foot, but now things are in full swing. I don't know that, I don't, I don't anticipate us seeing a decrease in sales revenue. Um, I think we will still see a steady, um, steady uh, day trip visitors to Lake County. Um, again, as an offset to the pandemic. Um, okay, so this is just a graph showing another visualization of that. So this has climax and then other valuations. So the orange line is our mine by proceeds valuation. And then the gray line, what I want you to pay attention to is the assessed minus, minus mining. So you can see that um, going out, um, we have steady increases um, in our revenues. And I think again, that this COLA increase can be fully absorbed um, and not have an impact on any other projects that the board would have um, in 23 or even in 22. Um, to make here. Oh, even, sorry, uh, even if uh, on this, if we look at this, um, if we look at, this is all the way back, um, I used, um, in working on this presentation and on these projections, um, which you have in your board packet, um, between uh, 2009 and 2010 is when the recession hit uh, Lake County, it was a tourist-based economy, um, so that was a 7% decline. So even if we look at a 7% decline in these valuations, it is still something that can be fully absorbed. And then this is just another visualization of that of estimated revenue um, to 2025. Um, so again, you know, um, recapping a couple of these. So with an enhanced budget process, the board will be able to project better and plan projects better um, and anticipate needs. Uh, with the development of a COLA policy and a merit-based increase policy, we can, which will be tied to budget, um, you, um, you and future boards will have the ability to make decisions off of real numbers, projected numbers, um, and to feel comfortable in your decisions. Um, and then at the very end of it uh, is that we just, we have to retain our staff. Um, it's been extremely hard to find any director level positions. Uh, so HR, um, HR, OEM, REC, um, those are the only three I can think of now. Uh, but it's been very hard to find um, talent to fill those positions, which you know comes at a cost of my time and increased cost of, of staff uh, spending more time uh, picking up the slack of not having those people here. Um, and then also, you know, the the general cost of turnover is like one and a half to two times someone's salary. So not only is it the, you know, the, the recruitment process costs a, a manager or supervisor spending time doing that, um, it's the paperwork costs, it's Allie's time on onboarding, um, doing background checks, all of those kind of things, but then also just bringing someone on board and training them for how, how we operate, um, what we do, all of those kind of things. So it's, a, it's, uh, it's expensive to lose people is my point. So um, anyway, my the goal here is uh, staff retention. So I can go back, I guess the proposal before you today is um, mid-year COLA increases of 5% and 4% with a total fund impact of $223,215.53. Commissioner Friedland, you have questions? Um, maybe just a couple clarifying. That, that difference between general funds and total funds is because some of the departments bring in revenue that would cover Correct. some of this? Okay. Yeah. So uh, human services, public health, airport are just some examples of, of other of funds that do not impact the general fund. 
Yeah. Do you have anything else? No, uh, not questions. No, this is good. Okay, Commissioner yeah. Mudge. No, I don't. I don't have any questions. I think I will. It's really important to retain folks and recruit folks, and it's been really frustrating to, well, yeah, to feel like you take a couple steps back every time we, you know, have lose, uh, lose someone or, you know, get a big gap filled, and then uh, in particular, your time, Tim, is taken on something else coming up. So um, along with this, I also, you know, we've talked about other approaches and opportunities for revenue generation, as well as, um, you know, increasing positions, which we all, which we have done over the last couple of years. So I think, um, while all of those things can't be tackled all at once, we've been chipping away at all of that. Um, and I have confidence that we'll continue to do that. And through some of these like things getting put into policy, that makes me feel a lot better than I would have necessarily felt a few years ago being this <laughs> yeah. position, like just ad hocly suggesting adding a quarter of a million dollars to our payroll um, because you've done a great job at helping us hold people accountable and create better systems um, and motivate people, I think, to be here and, and you know, invest in their role in the county government for services for the community. So um, I do, yeah, I do appreciate you working with the workforce center too, because I think as we have to fold in all of, you know, the things to consider, um, it'd be really nice to get a really great idea of, you know, just how to compete. Um, I think I read that graph wrong and I was thinking that you had that in order of, where we were falling, but then as you switched, I realized that no, one. Um, yeah, that one. I thought we were like fifth, but then I was following trying to read the numbers. Um, I can't see that part. Yet. Um, and I mean, I just you know, it's really hard to as we develop all these other ways to talk about our compensation and the value in employees and services. Um, I think we'll do continue to do a better job about talking about the whole compensation package because there's more than just our salaries that we really do invest into mm -hmm. um, our folks. Um, and I think that that is something we just need to continue to do a better job communicating mm -hmm. to the public and, you know, as we kind of recruit folks and talent because um, it's you know, I'm not, I'm not sure we'd ever really get on the same playing field as Eagle or Summit just because of the nature of our but, revenue. Like yeah. it is just kind of an impossible task. And so, um, yeah, with all of these other projects and things that we're looking at in cutting costs or finding efficiencies and generating more revenue, um, I'm eager to keep the big picture in play over the next couple of years and really see how we can yeah. make this work. If I may, we're, we were not the only county facing this. Um, Fremont County, the county commissioners there, uh, based on tenure, gave across the board increases of 10 and 15 percent. Um, as you know, the uh, local school district just gave a 19 percent mm -hmm. increase. Um, you know, Grand County in the past three years has given two 20% across the board increases, um, plus other things to try and attract and retain people. So we're, not that it's good, but we're not alone in this um, in this struggle. And, and I agree with you, Commissioner Mudge, on the um, showing off more of our full compensation package. So CRA will be coming later this month. Mm -hmm. um, and to meet with employees, I'm going to make that meeting mandatory. So everybody has to go um, and learn about the retirement benefits. Mm -hmm. um, and and yeah, and there are other there are other things that we can work on with our, our health, our health benefit package and things like that. Um, but I think for a lot of people at the end of the day, it's right, it's what's in their paycheck. Yeah. 
I think it's super interesting to see that graph of unemployment and then, mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. you know, jobs <laughs> available. Cross. Yeah, like yep. this right here, especially in the three county region. Um, you know, because I think like some of the feedback that we've received even in the last couple of years is like, yeah, I really don't want to drive, but if I'm going to make $20,000 more, I, I probably will do that. And so this just shows that that is a real, very real possibility, um, even with not being able to keep up. But I think that that's very interesting. Um, and I would personally attest what a challenge it is because my admin book for if we left the end of January to be three and a half months to at $10 above per hour. Yeah. So it's, yeah. I think really my um, biggest fear in terms of retention is that one, we're paying a lot for um, work that you're doing for other director level positions. So we're paying for that work to be done at your salary level rather than those director level positions. So it's costing us more to get that work done, um, which is not as efficient um, as it could be, but also that um, it's gonna cause burnout for you. And I, I personally am extremely impressed at this level of detail and presentation. Um, and I feel like we've really upped our game just because of your presence and ability to do this and, and bring presentations like this to us. And I don't want to take a step back. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I think I did say that. I was like, this is really great. What if you're not here? <laughs> yeah. Um, so like, I think this is exactly what we've been trying to set up in terms of bringing in this and this um, organizational design change and structure. And so I really just don't want to lose um, this because it's just furthering or like getting us closer to that vision of having that professional organization. So um, I don't really have any other questions. I think the only clarifying question that I would have um, is that statistic of the 12% turnover rate, do you have by chance have a number of what that is in terms of positions? Is that like 12 positions that have turned over or become vacant since the beginning of the year? Probably about, is it like we're, 18? It's, it's more, it'd be more than positions. I think we're thinking employees, like oh, in June, okay. I think there are seven people left. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay. So we've averaged four or six. Well, four, between four and six each month. Okay, so, okay. Mm -hmm. That's, I think that's all right. Number. Okay. I really think that that's just kind of for me, just seeing that number in terms mm -hmm. of. Uh, we can get some desks for you too if, if you would like to see that. I can get some part stuff if you would like that. Oh, no, I think that's fine. I just wanted a, a ballpark number, but that's great, Allie. I appreciate it a lot. Okay. Yeah. Well, on that same. Sorry, Jeff. No, go ahead. Um, I, I, you know, along with like continuing to improve the systems and the methods at which we like address all these considerations um i do still think we really need to look at you know it kind of, it kind of made me nervous about like a sweeping increase across the entire county rather than like looking at certain areas or departments or offices and i i think um you know the way we combat some of those questions that are inevitable from staff is just saying well we you know we really need to we do need to look at not filling some vacancies and yes. in you know we are trying to invest in more positions in departments and offices that truly do need them and have been without for a long too long um mm -hmm. especially where mm -hmm. development or like really impactful things on the community and the county like environment um in all aspects are are yeah concerned. like really tuning in and focusing that capacity building um so to make sure that, you know, if positions come available, we really focus on working with the elected official or department director of like, you know, what is this essential for your department or your office, or could this money in the general fund theoretically be better utilized in X department where we're trying to build capacity. So um, really being focused on that and intentional in building that capacity, I think. Yeah. For sure. To the target of several department directors have already started doing that. Okay. Wow, so, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, You're so um, efficient. 
on it, but but no, it is it and it is something that should be done just because the staff staff relieves that that's an opportunity for change, mm -hmm. um, not an opportunity for the status quo. Cool. I appreciate that. Go ahead. Tim. Yeah, I, I was just going to comment. I mean, yeah, again, really, I, I echo. I really like the detail and thoughtfulness. Um, I really like the slide seven and eight. You know, the eight that it's not just about money that we're paying people. You know, that there's a whole bunch of other factors that go in that we're working on that make this a sort of a good place to work. You know, and I see. I mean, job descriptions and performance reviews. That's not you know that that's not micromanaging people. I mean, I think it's it's good to know what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> and being sort of reviewed against that and not whatever was on your boss's mind, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, someday of the year. Um, so I really like that. I really like the revenue projections because, yeah, that's the scary part is like locking in, you know, a, a very significant amount. But I like that. One comment on the projections, mm -hmm. not to, to influence this decision, but I think as maybe as you go into budget year, if it's possible, I'd be really curious trying to. And sorry, this is like a little off topic from from the, the coal increase, but like seeing that like big increase in revenue, I I'd just be curious if there's some like rule of thumb for budgeting about how much of that is going to get eaten up by additional service requirements from our growth. Mm -hmm. You know, so how much of that is actually more money, <laughs> you know, yeah. that we have to play with for things like job increases and other you know, sort of newer priorities, because some of that is going to have, I would just assume like some chunk of that has to get eaten up so by, you know, <clears throat> you know, more building permits, mm -hmm. more sheriff's deputies calls, mm -hmm. you know, fire. Um, cost of facility management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. all of those things, um, yes, will be included in the new budget. Okay. Um, and just so you guys have a projection of like, so when I say that, you're looking at new funding minus the COP of like $5 million between uh, 23 and 22, right? There will be other factors yeah. into that <clears throat> before you guys get to play the next one. Oh, we have 10 million. Yeah. Right. So, so you, you, you know, things that we need to need to get done. Yeah. Like I would assume right. the next step also is putting together like a facilities master plan with yeah. the parks and recreation and open space planning. Mm -hmm. And then so yeah so other puzzle pieces so the cost recovery strategies and then with the with the pros master plan coming out um, we'll have <clears throat> from public works we'll have a, a rough draft actually probably a pretty good draft of like just like facility costs and deferred maintenance what that looks like and then we can back into budgeting that way with the fire department at least we can actually have a, a really good um, fire apparatus acquisition plan mm -hmm. um, so the county is prepared for that and not um you know doing mid-year four hundred thousand dollar purchases mm -hmm. um so all, all of those are, are puzzle pieces as well that will be reflected in the new budget um okay. but also are yes on top of front of mind top of mind somewhere in there for me so for example in relation to your question about service level um maintenance if if we wanted theoretically for like the library to be open seven days or for public works to provide service seven days a week in the winter time, like shifts from Sunday to Wednesday or Tuesday to Saturday. This is all theoretical. So no, like <laughs> don't, <laughs> you know, run back and tell them that this is the, um, but theoretically that would be built into the budget document that you're working on with yeah. Crystal yeah. and Dallas to bring to us. Yeah. And so, okay. and then when the budget is presented to you guys in October, then is the opportunity for you guys, we can have you ask those questions and we can plug in those numbers so you can see what it would look like um, okay. to enhance, enhance somewhere else, take away somewhere else, um, those kind okay. of things. And we can also, we can add in a 7% decline um, okay. uh, to each budget and what that impact to service would be. Um, okay. Because it would, um, it should be that um, programs and services decline, not that we let go of employees. Okay. Um, we want to keep them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Are we, have we, I think at some point in a conversation, maybe it was thrown out that could we talk to the assessor's office and do evaluation every year? So um, we actually, like, is that, is that a strategy to get yeah. some? You can do that, um, or you can do it every time a home is sold, so that um, 
that new whatever valuation or whatever market rate valuation is when the home is sold, then that can be um, additional revenue. So there are, yes, there so are. So there are different for methods that. for yes. the assessor's approach to valuation yeah. and, and which would affect revenue. And we could kind of work together to see how. I think it would just take a lot more staff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. that. Right. Uh, because you have to be updating stuff while we're being like. Yeah. So, like when you have a, a home that yeah. sells, right, they get notified of the home of the sale. And so then that will trigger them to reset the value, the appraised value or the assessed value at that location. Um, and so then immediately when that sale comes through, they do visit the property to make sure that it is in, in order with what they have on their property record card and measure the property and all the, all the things. And so if that happens more frequently, we'd have to increase staff there, which would take a little bit of time for them to get those classes and training, but wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah. So, but yes, there are, but yes, yeah, yeah definitely. And I think, uh, I don't know if this week if the assessors, uh, the, the deputy assessor is doing the mid-year budget review with you guys, um, but it's a perfect time to ask that question. Yeah, I think they're up tomorrow. Okay. A, a question related somewhat to that was, and I probably shouldn't answer this, <laughs> <laughs> when building permits for improvements, additions, and stuff for make the residential housing, is that information shared with the assessor's office? Yeah, um, they have. Um, yeah, they have a list of permits that gets updated by the building department in real time. And they do get okay. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that if not, that would be another way to yeah. actually stay on top of changes to property, not just through the sale process. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Um, I'm. I'm super impressed and very thankful for your information and professionalism. So thank you um, with this. All right. I will um, entertain a motion to propose or to uh, accept or deny the proposal in front of us for a mid-year cost of building adjustment. Move that we approve the year uh, cost of living adjustment. Second. All right, any further discussion? No. None for me either. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you very much. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Yeah. All right, number three on our agenda an adoption of changes to the Lake County Government Employee Handbook. Sorry, you told me about your All right. All right, Allie, you're welcome to come up to the table. Um, this is Allie Garvey with our Human Resources Department, and she will be leading us through the proposed changes with our employee handbook. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Allie. Um, and then I think, uh, how many changes do you have in there? Um, let's see, I think it's the ones we discussed in the yeah. work session. Okay. I want to say that it was like five. Okay, and I think that we can, um, if you wanna go through the five of those with us, then we can um, either make a motion to approve all five of them or go one by one. We'll, we'll yeah. do that after we make your presentation. Okay, sounds great. Awesome. Um, so I'll go through it kind of the same way that I did before. So this is the list of all the changes that we had discussed, um, and then I can show you the exact language in the handbook. Um, so that first one is interim upgrade. We had discussed maintaining the flexibility of the language of an interim upgrade while still stressing that the interim rate of pay is temporary. Um, I have added this increased rate of pay may be consistent with the pay scale of the interim position which the employee is filling. This is the flexibility of the rate by, rate by including May, but it defines what to go off for, of for an interim rate so that supervisors aren't floundering if trying to figure out what they should um, give an employee. Um, we'd also discuss amending the payroll change form to include this. Um, so I would put in the payroll change form any change in the employee rate must be approved by county manager and applicable department director and submitted to human resources. That's already kind of implied in the form anyway. Um, so we can look at that, but so that would be You know, if I skip past it, I think it's right around here. 
So that would be right there. Okay. Are there any questions about that one? Does that seem? That's good. I think it's good to have it as, I mean, clear is better than it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And it can, and there's, it's still flexible. So that means yeah. we can't, come, an employee wouldn't be able to come back and say, well, it's in here because there's still that name. Okay. Um, so the call and the callback pay, um, this is something that we had discussed, amended to include a stipend for employees who are called back, um, out of this intersection under callback, where a callback is defined as an unstable request from authorized supervisor, uh, an authorized supervisor. And that one um, is kind of here. So employees who are not on call and are called back will receive a payment of $30 for a regular workday, $60 for a weekend day, or $100 for holidays for each period during which they are called out in addition to pay at the regular rate or overtime at the applicable rate for hours actually spent in responding to calls. Um, and then this is in the section where it defines, defines a callback as being defined by um, an unsubjected request made by an authorized manager. So it's not just getting called back by one of um, their coworkers. So okay. um, any questions about that one? All right. We have uh, holiday pay hours. So remove maximum of eight hours language to accommodate for our employees who work 12, 10 or other amounts of hours on their scheduled shifts. So that's just kind of striking that out. Um, okay. And so that would be to accommodate for up here saying um, when paid holiday leave is taken for a full work day, employee would pay for a number of hours, the employee would have otherwise been scheduled to work. So okay. that is that part right there. Are there any questions about that one? All right. Um, and then the last one, we had added a maximum accrual. So uh, page 28. Oh, so this perfect. one is just the maximum accrual per pay period. So that employees, if they work overtime, cannot accrue more than the 4.62. So this was already in the vacation. It just wasn't in there for a sec. So, um, and then the maximum for part-time employees would be 2.67 hours. Um, that okay. would be 40 hours a week, but most part-time employees don't work 40 hours a week anyway, so. Okay. Yeah. Easy. Um, Chris, <laughs> thanks. Uh, Chris, you vetted all these with Allie, I'm assuming, and they were said, oh, I, I guess I didn't send them out to you, but. Yeah, I didn't get them, but I don't have any issues with the way okay. it's been rephrased. I think that it's, it makes it clear. Okay. But it still provides accounting some flexibility. Perfect. Okay. So the next step then will be to, if we choose to um, adopt these, to re-record this and then send, distribute it to all employees, to let them know that there have been updates to the, to the handbook, correct? Okay. And my suggestion would be when you do that, to provide your summary mm -hmm. in there so that, it, two reasons for that. One is that we all know that there will be folks who won't take the time to, to read the handbook in those areas. And so this provides them the summary so they can't say, I didn't know you changed that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and also just for, for consistency in terms of having them have access to a quick reference as to what changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah that's okay. Great. In our work session, did we talk about changing the PTO as well, or is that a future conversation and paying out PTO and that or is, potentially not paying out? PTO? Yeah, that's a future mm -hmm. okay. bigger, bigger puzzle piece. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. yeah. I yeah. because the law says we have to pay yeah. out a future PTO. The only thing you don't have to pay out is sick leave. Mm -hmm. you know, anything with vacation, PTO, doesn't matter what you call it, it other types of paid leave you have to pay out. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought you had said like PTO, you don't necessarily have to yeah. No, just sick leave. And no, it was, I think what you're talking about, Chris, about is the um, reliability that the county holds right now yeah. in terms of everything oh, saved up PTO. Yeah. Sure. And then how they accrue it quarterly yeah. or right. so that yeah. we actually yeah. are okay. You can really not manage. on the hook for that as soon as somebody starts with the right. employment here. Okay. Right. But if we and if we do make those changes, correct me if I'm wrong. So if we move to everybody who's worked here for a year or more gets two weeks paid and then you can accrue a little bit more we would have to pay out that two weeks even if they work yeah mm -hmm. but or to, what the current pto that they have right. yeah if you reduce their vacation that. bank you'd still have to pay it out right yeah. so if you said so somebody you can accrue pay. only up yeah. to 100 hours and somebody has 400 hours you'd have to pay the 300 hours sure difference. sure yeah but the pto doesn't doesn't turn over from year to year but the vacation hours do right and so the, our conversation was like, how do we? Well, do currently that our vacation hours just accrue every pay period. They don't. 
like not bank and then you lose some kind of thing. Is that what you're talking about? Right, but the PTO hours you do the, lose that. Like that's just an annual yeah, pers yeah, personal time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's okay. 24 hours that an employee would get prorated for when they start, and then next year they don't get to add that and make it 48 or something. Right. It would just be 24. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the one thing I, I'll cost pump that that I've run into with with other government situations is you end up in situations where you get to December and all of a sudden nobody wants to work because they've got all this time and they've years <laughs> in it. So it, you probably want to encourage department directors to track that stuff as well mm -hmm. to encourage folks to take it throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Or could we do uh, anniversary maybe? Could we do that? I was gonna say you could do it so it's not all. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. that you could end up in an uncomfortable situation, and then people complain because, well, mm -hmm. I asked for the time off, you know, for the holidays, and I couldn't take because there were too many other requests, and so I lost my time. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's some things we can definitely do about that then. Mm -hmm. But I think to Sarah's point, Tim and Allie, when we're discussing with employees like total compensation package, I think it would be really beneficial to make sure that this is included in the total compensation package that we talk to them about. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. Um, like the, because this carries a liability cost with it on the balance sheet. So I think it would be really important to say to them, like this is a part of your compensation package and mm -hmm. maybe explain that to people that might not, yeah. they may not understand that that is part of their total compensation. And Ali has started doing that on the front end with onboarding. Okay. So okay. people do see that and they can they realize that. Mm -hmm. um, but everybody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and all of our ads in the newspaper do advertise PTO as part of our benefits package. Oh, great. Awesome. Okay. I don't have any other questions or comments no. or concerns. That was very straightforward. So <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> No, no, I will say this is great. I mean, because wasn't I mean when we started working on the handbook, like it was like 13 years out of date or something. Mm -hmm. So it's just great to be keeping up yeah. you know, with like changes like this so mm -hmm. it doesn't become 13 years yes. out of date again. Well, and I think changing the policy when we recognize that there's an issue with the policy. Yeah. Right. I mean, so yeah. thank you for that. Um, I don't have any questions and we um I'll just accept a motion, however anybody wants to speak. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I'll move to approve the Lake County Government Employee Handbook revisions as presented by HR um, in full. Okay. I'll second. Any further discussion? No. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Allie. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, Allie. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much, Allie. We appreciate it. Thank you. Get back to my agenda. Okay. Um, next is a contract with Ace Security and Safety Services LLC for Security Services Upper Lake County Courthouse. Um, and so this is a ratification of this contract. Um, I've worked on this with uh, Sheriff Heath Speckman. Um, as you know, we had a high profile murder case recently um, prosecuted in the courthouse, um, and it was requested of the courts and of the sheriff that we move forward with um, providing some uh, additional court security. Um, so ACE Security has currently been contracting with us. There's money in the court security grant to cover it. They provide coverage 40 hours a week. Um, it's $3,800 per week. Um, and then we for this contract. Um, and this will go until we terminate the contract. It's been reviewed by legal. Um, the sheriff sent it to Chris and she vetted the contract and helped put it in the uh, professional services doc, uh, template document that we have. Um, and so it's ratifying this contract um, that the sheriff uh, has entered with <clears throat> ACE security. Um, the next step in this process is that I had applied for a court security grant um, with Sheriff Speckman. We asked for $265,000 to have this additional security to provide security at the front doors. Um, we were denied that request and awarded $105,000. Um, so him and I will work through the budget for this next cycle with court security and um, this contract and service. Great. 
And will they, is the contract through just the trial currently or will they? Through, through the summer okay. um, right now. And then we will be awarded the grant through the state fiscal year starts okay. July 1 to June 30. So we just found out about the award on Friday. So we'll figure out what that looks like going into okay. the next part so security cycle. Yeah. Okay. And we had chatted with some of our contractors and professional um, assistants through the sheriff's office mm -hmm. when we had that gap and um, a lot of them were actually recommending that or letting us know that a lot of um, jurisdictions actually contract this service out, which like sounded yeah, I mean, really great because mm -hmm. we've had a real hard time hiring for it. So yeah. um, those, I mean, the gentlemen who <laughs> happened to be here through ACE were really friendly and um, I was really happy to have them. Yeah, it was really same. nice. <laughs> Um, I and and we'll work through what that looks like with the cost um, for the court security grant that we just received. We asked for two full time and one part time person um, in the court security grants, in addition to our current court security employee um, that sits upstairs. Mm -hmm. So that grant ask was really big, and um, we have permission from the courts because they do sign off on that grant document. Mm -hmm. um, permission or not permission support from the courts for that ask with court security grant. So now that the grant dollars are, are significantly smaller than what we had originally asked for, we can still work that in. It's just going to be um, some periods of coverage that might be slimmer or more beefed up depending on the types of trials that we might have mm -hmm. in and out of the courts. So the sheriff and I will um, go through the grant document this week um, and then make a determination of how to move forward with an addendum to this contract um, for those services. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Question when you're yeah. looking at that too, because so, I noticed there's always two out there. Mm -hmm. And I guess the question is is that only when there are trials going on upstairs or is it just there? Because I know the volume of traffic coming in and out. It's probably not as high to justify two yes yeah. at the time unless there is a trial or there are court activities going on. Yeah, I don't I think that's um part of the conversation that Heath and I will have about working that into that court security grant. Mm -hmm. Um and then seeing if the county needs to cover any overage on the court security grant or not. Um but but we'll figure that out this week what that looks like. But that might be part of that proposal, Chris, with um, you know, slimming down services when it's not necessary to have increased services for jury trials or something like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Do they have, they still using the stand, the thing upstairs? The I don't, stand? I don't believe so, but there was a court security deputy upstairs during the trial, um, to provide for additional security with court staff that and jurors. Yeah, because mm -hmm. no one just down here, but yeah. I was going to say, if they aren't using the standards upstairs anymore, mm -hmm. That might help in terms of not yeah. unless there is some going on in the courtroom, you don't necessarily need a bailiff. Yeah. Up there. Yeah. Um, and so we we do plan, as far as I know from the sheriff, we do plan to keep the current employee that we have with court security um, and keep her upstairs because she does provide additional support in those um, instances with court security. So there's not any any talk of cutting employees yeah, at this yeah. point. Um, we I'll just want to supplement right. down here. Yep, <laughs> yep, absolutely. So um, anyway, that's just what this is that I've been working on with the sheriff. <laughs> so um, any questions about the contract with a security at this point? Nope, that sounds good. Yeah. Um, I'll move to approve the ratification of the contract with a security and safety services LLC for security services. Um, at the Lake County Courthouse. I'll second. Any further discussion? Thanks for having me. Yeah. Just that discussion um, reminded me, I, I, I don't know if this is just like an idle thought or a technical work, but like the idea of cross-training between like court security, you know, detention, you know, even the CSOs when that becomes a thing, um, you know, I don't, yeah, I have no idea how possible that is or yeah. if employees do or don't want that. Um, and it's sort of, I mean, but just something to you know, I'll remember. The sheriff. Yeah. yeah, I'll definitely remember to share that information with him. I think um, him and I will go through the court security grant because contracting is something that we haven't done before for security. And so we'll just want to make sure that if we are cross-training employees, that we are sure to appropriately 
um, expense their payroll expenditures from wherever they're working. Oh, yeah. So just, just want to make sure that we incorporate that on the back end and make sure that the court security grant supports them. Yep. So. Okay. Any other discussion? Thank you. Great point, though. Okay. All right. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, up next is a contract with FCI Constructors Incorporated and Robert Juris and Associates, Architects LTD, um, RJA, for design and construction of the planned Lake County Community Justice Center. Um, so Chris, we have you on the agenda to present these and Jeff, if you have additional um, comments since you've worked with, um, with the selection committees, um, you're welcome to chime in. But Chris, if you want to join us, or if you'd prefer to sit over no. at your little desk, <laughs> oh, well, I'm good right here. Okay. Um, if that's right. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. So essentially, Colleen and I have been working for what seems forever um, to get the final terms negotiated with um, RGA and uh, SCI on these contracts, and so. We were finally able to get everybody together last week for back-to-back -back Zoom meetings with each of the, the vendors. And um, RGA, the, the challenge with them has been it's somewhat of a moving target and in, in terms of what was proposed. You know, the contract was sent out to them as part of the, the process and stuff for review, and they were asked to provide comments, which they did. Some of the frustration is the things after they were chosen that they asked to change weren't in the original contract stuff. And, and in fact, like coming I mean, one of the issues was the insurance levels. Yeah. And the the you know the RFP required RFQ you know noted that it was going to be for the design of two million, four million insurance coverage. And they said that they would be able to provide that you know, cost in their, their bid. But then backtracked on that when I guess they figured out what the cost was going to be because they had historically they had only covered up to two million dollars um, with insurance and they um, haven't had any claims and that type of thing. So uh, you know, uh, based on I think Commissioner Fiedler's feedback and his communications with you all, um, you know, the, the proper was to accept that. Now some of the other changes they're asking for that Colleen is still working through the, the language on has to do with the fact that in the proposed contract, there are some blanks, if you will, that need to be filled in. And they're wanting to negotiate the information, the additional information that goes into those. Um, the one thing I just want you to be aware of is depending on how that comes out, um, they, they want to not only have more specifics, but they want more information that Tony and I feel may end up impacting the, the actual cost, if you will. Um, for example, they want to know what the contingency is. And typically, you don't provide your vendors with that information because then they say, I've got that cushion, you mm -hmm. know, and I, mm -hmm. I can build to that cushion. So that information is, is typically not provided. So I'm sorry to say that that um, for RJA, I don't have the final version of the contract from Colleen based on our discussions with them last week. I expect that anytime. So if we can handle these in two separate things, I'd like to, to make a, a request that the RGAA contract be approved for pending final legal review, depending on what comes to it, how, how much they dig in their heels about that additional information stuff. So. Okay. Any questions otherwise on that? I don't have any questions. Do you have anything to add, Jeff? Or? No, I think that that covered it. I mean, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I, no, I think that was good. Okay. <laughs> Sarah, no, Commissioner Marsh, do you have any questions? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, with FCI, are there any? Well, I was going to ask the hand because the, the, the FCI is, was a lot simpler. There were only two issues that came down for them. One um, had to do with the, if the county defaults in its payments, what the interest rate would be, which I thought was kind of unusual for them to dig their heels in. But of course, when we got their CFO on the meeting last week, and it's like, I'm fine. So, They've accepted our two percent, um, which is based on if if there's a fault, somebody goes to court and they get a judgment, then the, the essentially prescribed um, interest rate through the Secretary of State's uh, process for money judgments is two percent, and so that's okay. what I used for that. And so they accepted that. Um, the other one had to do with. Um, 
subrogation as it applies to their subcontractors. And so um, it, essentially what they, they wanted to take out that the waiver of subrogation would apply to their subcontractors. And I'm okay with that as long as, and they seem to understand, they're still on the hook for their subcontractors. So the only exposure there for the county is if a subcontractor fails to perform and defaults, and FCI wouldn't have the funds to cover it, either insurance or otherwise, given the size of FCI and the other projects and stuff like that. I don't think that's a high enough risk that the county needs to be concerned about accepting them. The cool. waiver would only apply to um, FCI. Okay. Great. Any earlier? Okay. Great. Other than that, I think I and that I think we're on target with. So okay. And I don't I don't I didn't see her send the final contract notice, or did she? Mm -hmm. Um see I know that. she said she was still working on uh the um RJA one. So I oh, I know what she said. She sent an email saying that it's over to FCI for signature. So we haven't gotten it back signed from FCI, but they've indicated they've accepted it. It's just going to be a process. So can we um, approve both of those pending final legal review because they'll come from you? Or um, FCI just as is, because they have the they, contract. They have they have agreed okay. to the, the provisions that we talked about. Like, so all we're waiting for now is their signed one. So as soon as we get the signed version from them, it can be presented. So I would, I would ask that you accept that one, go in and approve that one. Okay. The RJA one, I would want the approve. pending final legal okay. review. Okay. All right, so I will accept a motion for FCI. Uh, I move that we accept the contract uh, with FCI Constructors, Inc. Okay, second. Any further discussion? Okay. All right, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, um, and I will accept a motion for our contract with RJA. Uh, I move that we accept the contract with Robert Juris and Associates Architect uh, um, as the lead uh, design uh, for the Justice Center pending uh, final legal review. Okay, second. Any further discussion? No. All right, none for you. All right, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, Chris You're and welcome. Jeff, yes. for working on working through that. Yes, yeah, yes, we have those back from from the signing from SCI and then from Kyle. We'll get those over to you. For okay. Cool. All right. Um, and I see that we still have a member of the public on with us. Can you hand me that mouse, please? Um, I don't know if you have any um, public comment. I I don't have any. Hearing since then. Okay. All right, so seeing no um, further items on our agenda this afternoon, any final comments from my board members, fellow board members? No? All right, thank you all very much for joining us today. We appreciate it, and we will adjourn at 12.13 p.m. Thank you.